What's up, champs? Hello, everybody. Welcome to a bonus, uh, what we call it? impromptu episode of Keeping Carlson, I guess, short shifts. We'll figure this out as we go along. Basically, we had nothing planned for this week, but I'm itching to talk fantasy hockey. And so I've brought in one of the big guns, your friend from short shifts, the great Louis Ezekiel. Louis, how are you on this fine, fine Wednesday evening? Uh, doing great, you know. Uh, as a Jack Roslovic roster in the one league where I'm still hanging in there, I am continuing to reap the reward of uh, his excellent deployment and play. So uh, I'm enjoying that in uh, in the limited games we have here on Wednesday. Man, yeah. So uh, the plan for this show, I think, is we're just going to bounce around some box scores. And get, you know, this isn't like we're thinking long term, no analysis in terms of like even strength, like shooting percentage or anything like that, right? We're just looking at who's hot right now, what are the lines, who's injured. I think we're just going to chat for a half an hour, and we can start right, yeah, with this game that's going on right now. There's a minute left. The Blue Jackets are beating the Habs five to one, and yeah, Jack Roslovic having himself a game, two goals, five shots. I mean, we said it on the podcast a bunch of times since uh, Boone Jenner got injured. Roslovic has taken over on the top line. He's playing with Line and Nyquist today. Also, uh, he wasn't necessarily getting top power play time. He still hasn't been. Like he's, even though it seems like maybe he, he should be, but regardless, I guess he's producing. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm just bringing it up now. I got to bring up the schedule here because I think a lot of our advice is going to have to be really tailored to what's going on this week and next week. As far as this week goes, for already, sure. If, if you don't have Roslovic. You've already missed today, but Columbus does play Saturday, Sunday. So he's definitely someone you might want to consider Sunday, the day that you might have a spot, a space for him there against Anaheim. Not so bad. That's a, that's a pretty good ad, actually. Absolutely. And especially if you keep shooting like you and Brian were talking about on the Sunday show, like that's the indicator that you want to see, obviously. And he's feeling confident right now. It seems like those shots are, are continuing to come and, and they're finding the back of the net. You know, what's interesting is uh, there were some people sort of debating whether you can have such a thing as a good trade, like, you know, the goal of a trade is to make your team better. And can you really have it happen with both teams? But it seems like that Columbus and Winnipeg trade really kind of worked out well for everybody. You know, Russell Vick, surprisingly effective. He was just sort of like a throw in in that deal. And then PLD and Line A both uh, having kind of a, a renaissance this season. Yeah, last year it looked like both sides lost the trade. <laughs> like and both definitely. Players, oh, those the early returns were awful. <laughs> it was kind of funny. It's like you both didn't win, you both lost. It was just Roslovic was the only good one. But yeah, this year and by the way, Line a also having a big game today, a goal and two assists. I guess that's what happens when you're playing with the great Jack Roslovic. By the way, I just want to put it out there right now. I'm in a new setup. I'm in a new house, and I'm I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to set up my microphone and the, and the computer and everything. So if I sound echoey or something, I'm going to re-listen to the show after. And so you know, this is an experimental show in many ways, both in terms of throwing together something last minute and in terms of my sound quality. I, I don't probably most people are like I don't care. You'll just get back to it. But I just, had, I just wanted to throw that out there. But uh, you, Lewis, you sound great as always. Well, thank you. The audio heads like you can hear, you know, every every little detail. Uh, for people like me who spent, you know, eight years with trombones blasting into the back of my head, I, I don't pick up on those little details, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I, I rely on you to tell me what you hear. Yeah, after the fact. <laughs> and I'm like, Lewis, can you, uh, whatever, tweak this thing? <laughs> uh, so some other players having big games today for Columbus, because maybe if you're in a super deep league and you can't get Jack Roslovic, we've got Emil Bemstrom with a goal and an assist and Cole Sillinger. With a goal and an assist. And then Nyquist. I guess Nyquist is the obvious one. It's like Line A, Nyquist, Roslovic. So obviously they're all just clicking together on one line. And then, yeah, we've got Bamstrom and Sillinger giving the production from the guys that are like 0% rostered. If, if we look at the lines, they're on the same line actually with Jacob Voracek. So we're looking at like second liners. It's not exactly uh, people like getting completely buried. It's not like they're getting like low ice time and have lucked into goals. Uh, Bemstrom's played now. The game's over. So according to this ESPN, unless they haven't updated the ice time yet, we've got 15 and a half minutes for Bemstrom, 15 and uh, 20 seconds for Sillinger. Obviously, Sillinger is like the high pedigree first uh, round prospect that's going to be hopefully a big star for Columbus. Uh, but this year, he's probably still like a fringe guy in terms of fantasy in the short term. But yeah, he and Bemstrom, if you're in your deep league, again, I guess Sunday, there are also guys to look at. Bemstrom's actually available in my Dynasty League where no one's available. But uh, he's been generally pretty boring after at one point we thought he would maybe have a future, but maybe a strong end of season will boost his value. Yeah, it could be. I think that, you know, yeah, even if you, you know, like you say, almost everybody in that dynasty league is picked up. So maybe even a, like a good showing just can be something that you can uh, you can flip them for, you know? Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, so that's the Columbus 
uh, coverage. If we go to the Habs here on the other side of this game, obviously everyone was rushing to grab every single Hab because of their great schedule this week. Unlike Winnipeg, there wasn't a game postponed, so you're actually hopefully going to get all four of these Habs games, though not great returns today. There was a Ryan Paling power play goal. I'm sure no one had him. Uh, and then Hoffman and Suzuki got the assist. So yeah, we mentioned on the show, obviously, like Suzuki's rostered and Hoffman would have been a, a decent grab. But aside from that, I was bummed to see my guy, Jeff Petrie, not give me what I've been getting used to. A point, like a bunch of shots today. No shots. Three blocks, I guess. Oof. I'll take it. But come on, Jeff. Yeah, a few peripherals, but not what you were hoping for, definitely, on that Sunday show. Yeah, okay. So that's it for this game. I wanted to look at some other... Okay, I guess let's stick with today. The Rangers have shut out Philly 4 nothing. Man, Lewis, I was looking at Georgiev all day, thinking that's such a tasty stream. I was like, oh, maybe I should save my moves. What if someone gets injured? Maybe I should save it for Sunday. I'll grab a goalie then. I don't think I could have done better, though. A 28-save shutout over the hapless Flyers, who just have more and more injuries piling up every day. Like, they already lost Giroux. Like, they're already shorthanded. And then today, Ristolainen, Atkinson... Carter Hart. Hart is out for the season, by the way. That's the... Yeah, that's what they said it sounds like. Yep. That's so... I mean, anytime you're going to go up against uh, Philly, you already were looking pretty good. But yeah, with Hart out, you know, a better chance certainly at getting a win. It was it was Felix Sandstrom today, I believe. Yeah. Uh, after Martin Jones went yesterday, um, you know, and just got torn up, obviously. Uh, was it nine goals in the end uh, in that game from Tuesday? Oh, I think it yeah, was. Yeah. yeah, it was terrible. It's, uh, yeah, I yeah, think definitely in, in fantasy, you want to be like picking up players playing Philly. Actually, let's take a look there. So they play again Saturday, Sunday against Buffalo twice. So Buffalo was already a team with a good schedule this week, but another reason to like maybe potentially load up on your, obviously you want Thompson, Tuck and Skinner, your top liners. But yeah, there's a bunch of other guys on Buffalo that maybe become even more valuable because of this game against Philly this weekend, two of them. Yeah, Olafson is a guy that I think has really turned out lately. It was a very Elon situation where I finally parted ways with him and he really took off. Uh, I even accidentally left him benched for his one goal, one assist game, you know, a few weeks back. And then he's uh, kind of been fire ever since then. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, uh, Olafson is a guy that I'm kind of interested in on a, on a bit of a heater right now. And certainly, you know, playing against whichever goalie. Uh, Philly can can muster I think is a is a pretty appealing matchup for sure and and like you said I mean they are enormously shorthanded a ton of their scoring is missing I, I didn't know that you know Georgiev was going to start for sure today but it seemed like a risk that was definitely worth taking before uh, anybody else managed to grab him just because I mean you we saw the results right it was uh it was not a ton of uh dangerous offense outside of you know some good work in the first period and ultimately getting the shutout yeah, uh, that would have been a good stream for sure. I wish I did it. Ugh, too wimpy. And yeah, as far as Philly goes, I mean, come on. Like, at this point, just drop everyone, right? Like, I would have thought Atkinson was worth holding, but now that he's injured, so yeah, you stash him. But even though they have a Sunday game coming up, so you might have room, like, are you really going to hold, like, a Joel Farabee or a Travis Konechny or a JVR? Like, it just seems like this team could easily get... I mean, Buffalo... T- to be fair, Buffalo's not a-, a-, a super strong competitor, but Philly just looks done i don't know i'm not excited about anyone on philly right now i think they they could get shut out again yeah grab craig anderson maybe if you're hoping for some of those peripheral stats that you get when your team is way behind and you know you get some hits and some blocks because you don't control the puck and are just being shot at a lot maybe that's a good way to go maybe there'll be some pims as they try to stand up for themselves right (laughs) yeah if you're looking for goals assists plus minus look elsewhere uh that power play won today Sanheim Brink in his second NHL game, Konechny Farabee Hayes. That's uh that's that's rough. Yeah. Shams is saying, well, Hayes and Provorov are getting decent points. Like, yeah, like I I guess I'm looking at this like new look Philly if like Atkinson and and you know Cam York and all these extra people are also injured. Like at some point you just kind of run out of steam wrist wrist line. And yeah, like I'm sure someone will get a point. It's just like I wouldn't want to be depending on this team. I feel like they're a potential shutout candidate. But yeah, Sanheim is like, because he did have three blocks today, and he's, like you said, on the top power play. So as far as, like, deployment, and, he, and he's been getting some points recently. Like, it's not as if Sanheim has been doing nothing. So I, I feel like, uh, I guess him and Provorov... Like, yeah, I, I could see a reason to, like, grab a Philly player, but I'm not, like, overly excited. Like, Sanheim, maybe he scored a goal against Anaheim a couple of games ago. I don't know. I guess I'm, like, over-est- over-exaggerating how productive he's been. He's on top power play. He's getting blocks. 
But just like the ripple effect too, like if that's what you can put out with your best possible unit, you know, it's just, it's, it, it really takes away chances, I think, up and down the lineup. So yeah, I would not be very excited about, uh, sending anybody out to try and, and earn some points, even, even Hayes and Provorov. All right. Let's jump to, uh, some games from yesterday, but let's start with Florida versus Anaheim because Florida is a team that plays Friday, Sunday coming up. So they're going to be a really good stream for the rest of this week. And these three goals by Florida, two from Anthony Duclair, because of course I dropped him in Kakuffle, but like no one claimed him. That was a given. Yeah. (laughs) And also, uh, I like was thinking of adding him today. I couldn't think of anyone to drop. And then I guess I'll say lucky for me, he was taken, but not by my opponent. It was taken by Jeremy, who's in a consolation playoff matchup. So at least I don't have to worry about like, you know, getting beaten by my own player (laughs) by Mark taking, uh, Duclair. But yeah, if he was dropped in leagues, because yeah, his schedule wasn't great last week. Uh, at this point, he scored two goals, so his obviously his roster ship shot up. But I mean, it's not as if again he's not lucking into these goals. He's playing on a line with Barkov, and he's been on the top power play. They were running five forwards for most of the game. Uh, so Giroux, Huberdeau, Barkov, Reinhardt, and Duclair. So in your shallower leagues or like a tier one of a couple where he was dropped in, it, people yeah. were too nervous to use their moves on him. Uh, he's an obvious grab. Well, to be fair, I definitely would have been all over him if my roster was not locked. But sadly, after my fantastic swan song where I scored more points than I had in any match all season in my meaningless fifth place game, uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, was unable to add Duclair because my roster is locked these days. But I had my eye on him. I definitely would have jumped on him because I think that is a nice opportunity. And I just had that feeling, you know, the uh, the the Elon drop, you know, boost is a real thing. Uh, Hunter in the chat celebrating the Georgiev pickup celebration. Good on you, Hunter. I was happy with that too. We had a question from Matthew also. Uh, would you drop Oshi or Burakovsky or Oshi for Roslovic or Burakovsky? Burakovsky. Sorry. So we're dropping Oshi for Roslovic or Burakovsky or, or are we choosing who to drop between Oshi? That's and the Burakovsky? question. I think we're choosing drop Oshi and pick up one of those guys. All right, so Oshi just had a game where he got a goal, I believe. Let me just bring up the Washington situation here. He was playing on a line. They were the ones who scored nine times against Philly. Right, okay. So I guess maybe that shouldn't count. We shouldn't put too much credit on Oshi. He was on a super cold streak. He had only one assist in six games. But then, yeah, he did score a goal, but on only one shot versus Philly. So Oshi, yeah, not especially appealing. Let's get that schedule up here. So Washington just goes Thursday, Saturday. So definitely if you don't even have space, and yeah, you could get Roslovic who will give you a game on an off day. I think that makes sense. Like obviously Oshi is still yeah. on the top power play, I believe. So there's obviously still the possibility. Yeah. Oh, Johansson, Mantha. Oh, that was Johansson, Tom Wilson, Mantha, and Ovechkin. Wow. Uh, why, where was Kuznetsov in, in that game? He wasn't getting power play time? Am I having something wrong? Here? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just get the sense that maybe once you're up by five or six, right. you can kind of just fool around and, and play games. So I don't know how seriously to take any of those deployments Yeah, that's necessarily. Fair. It's one of those things where it's like, well, I'll, I'll say, yeah, it makes sense in with the schedule to drop Oshi for Roslovic, but it's not the kind of thing where I'm saying, like, there's no chance Oshi. Like, he's TJ Oshi, right? He's probably going to pace for 55-ish points for the rest of the season, but that's, like, on average, and we're talking, like, one or two games, so it's kind of a coin right. flip. He could definitely have a Like, Roslovic yeah. probably will pace for a similar outcome, but he's hot right now and, and he, you know, is probably pacing for considerably less right now. So he, you know, has got to bring his average up with some some success on this on this hot line right now. Yeah, and also I mean I'd rather have a guy playing with Patrick Line than a guy playing with whatever it is, Anthony Mantha and Mark Johansson. You know, like if he if even Nicholas Backstrom isn't in the lineup, that's another reason to not be too excited about TJ Oshi because he's not even playing with an awesome center. No offense to Marcus Johansson, of course. Right. Well, and, and we did hear that they're going to kind of manage uh, Backstrom's play moving forward and make sure, you know, they're not running him into the ground as they head towards the playoffs. So that situation may not change in the near future. So yeah, I'm into dropping Oshi for Roslovic or, or Burkowski, honestly. I might like Roslovic a little better just because of this heater that he's on. Yeah, and then so I guess back to Florida, again, like probably Duclair isn't available. If you want to look at some other options, like Verhage is still also, you know, on the top line. He had an assist in that game. And then the one player that's been kind of quiet, he went on a run for a while, is Anton Lundell. 
but he was injured then. And then he came back and he's on this line with Sam Reinhardt and Mason Marchment. And I'm just bringing him up right now, but I believe he's, oh, he has three points in six games since coming back from his injury, but only two shots over his last two games, just one shot in each game. That one of those goals was on that, in that game where he scored only, took only one shot. So I think he's like a fringe kind of guy. Like he's like not a typical third liner when you're playing with Sam Reinhardt. It's like not that typical. And I think that Lundell's still getting decent ice time around 15 minutes. So he'd be like your sort of lower end guy to maybe look for in free agency on Florida, I think. Yeah, and definitely like if we're thinking about planning for next year too, like if he if we see some people, you know, priced out maybe of Florida or who move on, you know, that's a guy who who could potentially move up the lineup and be pretty exciting. Uh I've I've think that he's been, you know, he's had an excellent uh first season outside of missing some time for injuries and stuff. So uh that's that's a guy that you maybe want to have your eye on as a bargain kind of end of the end of the draft player to grab. Mm-hmm. By the way, it turns out Matt's question was he was going to drop either Oshi or Burakovsky. I would hold Burakovsky because he's been playing on the top line with McKinnon and Rantanen. So that's just an amazing spot and you don't want to let that go. Yeah, you can you can let Oshi go, especially again, like you mentioned, with the schedule, he might not be getting in your lineup at all. Yeah. Uh, is it worth looking at the Anaheim side of this game? Anaheim, Derek Grant had a goal and this is, okay, that's getting probably too deep to dig into. I guess it's probably Trevor Zegras. Like, what happened to Ryan Getzloff? I guess he's like not 100% that he announced his retirement already. He's come back from this injury. He had a great run earlier this year, but now it seems like he's like not even rosterable anywhere. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, let's pick another game. Or yeah, people could also just ask questions in the chat here. Uh, that was actually fun to just answer Matt's question. Maybe that's what this random midweek show at the end of the season can evolve into, just answering questions while we look at box scores. How about uh, St. Louis? They're a team that plays a couple times in the weekend. They played against Boston. They won 4-2. to two. Another great outing for Billy Huso. I can't believe at one point I said, I at one point when I knew I had the buy, I was like, I'm going to just load up and get both Bennington and Huso because I'll probably get two games from each because I can't imagine uh, Barubi like giving up on Bennington. But now it seems like, you know, last week was only like one game for Bennington out of the four. My guess is it'll be the same this week. I guess they haven't announced Thursday's game yet, but Huso just continues to shine against a strong yeah. Boston team. I guess they were without Pasternak, but still, he's amazing. They were. Yeah. And, you know, Swayman too, I think, you know, if we can go into the other crease, he's really his, uh, the luster has definitely come off of him late in the season. He's had a bunch of four goal against games. Uh, I think the people who are kind of trying to rely on him have to be a little disappointed, especially because, uh, Olmark has outplayed him over the last month or so. Uh, so that's been a bit of a tough ride for the folks who were, who were hanging their hats on, on Swayman there towards the end. Yeah, good um, point. Yeah, I guess with uh, the game tomorrow against Ottawa, you got to imagine Allmark's going to get the start there. And I think if he plays well, maybe he even gets the Saturday. So if you're low on goalies and Allmark is out there because he's not rostered in as many leagues as like a lot of other starters, he may be turning it. It might be like a Huso situation, right? Like we thought it was going to be 50-50 and now it might be turning into Allmark being the starter going into the playoffs. And I think a lot of people would have bet on Swayman to be the starter going into the playoffs. But yeah, you're right. Right now it's looking like it's Allmark. Yeah, I think so too. And, and again, you know, forward thinking a little bit, you have to, uh, I would guess, you know, especially given the contract situation that we're going to have Olmark out the gate as the, you know, one at, at least one A, uh, you know, in October. Mm-hmm. So um, speaking of Boston, they play Ottawa on Thursday. And then I guess also speaking of goalies, so Boston plays Ottawa. I just added Anton Forsberg in the cupful on Tuesday, and he had a very nice game against your Detroit Red Wings, which, you know, is probably wow. a less scary. <laughs> High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's not worth so much, but he's been like really good. Like he had one bad game against the Rangers. And then maybe some people were thinking like, okay, time to just give up on Anton Forsberg. But if you look at his save percentages over the past couple of months, it's like very, I think he's, that, that game against the Rangers was like his worst save percentage she's had everything else has been like 900 or higher and now they go against boston which seems like a scary start but pasternak is out right so it's not the most scary like it's still boston but they were running like bergeron marchand debrusque and then haula taylor hall and a fellow named mark mclaughlin so i wonder if he's gonna stick we used to have a patron named uh matt mclaughlin who was who was a cool guy oh yeah (laughs) But anyway, uh, yeah, Mark McLaughlin, I saw him on a list recently of one of the top like NCAA players and now, but he hasn't done anything, but he's in a good spot, I guess. Well, is it, I guess when it's not Pasternak, then that second It's line, an all right it's like, spot. Yeah, it's not as exciting. Yeah, Hall certainly hasn't been nearly as exciting, obviously, with uh, Pasternak out and Hala has been still pretty solid. Like, I think that's probably your winner free agent pickup for, for Boston, you know, over the last few weeks. 
that that second line just yeah it loses a lot of its of a lot of its uh, a punch obviously and and that makes the first line you know less effective too because you can really focus on it yeah definitely and plus they're playing against Anton Forsberg a man who cannot yeah. be beat so maybe I'm not so excited something like about 17 my... games above 900 before that bad uh, New York Rangers game I think just like really quality start machine here. Yeah, I mean, we might be at a point now where if Boston only plays Thursday, Saturday, and if, you know, you are full on those days, you need to figure out who you're going to drop to make room for adding, like, a Florida person or someone playing on one of those off days, I think aside from Bergeron and Marchand, I think you could probably let go. Taylor Hall was dropped in Cupful. No one grabbed him for obvious reasons. This is the last week. I guess I could look. There are some people who actually tweeted us saying they're playing next week as well, which is fair. Brian and I will do a show on Sunday covering uh, next week's schedule, which I haven't looked at at all because all my leagues are going to be over after this week. Next week, sure. Boston, four games. So, okay. So maybe you could add Hall back, though. I think that you could, I think you could let go of all your Bruins. Maybe hold McAvoy, probably, if you have room for D. Most people have room, only hold like four D. Oh, yeah. I got to give McAvoy credit. He's been really, really good to end the season. Yeah. Okay. Let me let check him out. He's like a player that I don't really pay as much attention to. I feel like I used to pay so much attention. We used to every week talk about is it Grizzly or McAvoy on the top power play? And yeah. He's sort of oh, 12 points in his last nine games. Wow. Okay. So if anyone's gonna yeah. help, almost all it looks like those are all assists, by the way. <laughs> so a lot of them on the power play though. So if you get extra points for those power play assists, that's always good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a guy that I uh, the the guy in my buddy league that I beat in the semis. I traded. Uh, to get McAvoy from him, and then he just went off uh, during our our semifinal matchup. So that was a nice a nice battle there. Also, I had a total brain fart. It was Ryan McLaughlin. Was that patron I was talking about? Not Matt. I feel like I know someone named Matt McLaughlin. Also, I don't know. I don't know why that. Well, we have lots of Matts, lots of Matts, and lots of Ryans. Sometimes it's tough to keep them all straight. No offense to the many excellent Matts and Ryans uh, in <laughs> right. the patron group. Let's go to uh, Minnesota Edmonton. People in the chat here can like just shout out a game that they want us to look into uh, until we run out of time here. But yeah, yesterday Minnesota beat up on the Oilers five to one. Uh, there was a funny situation yesterday where Yahoo had Koskinen marked as the starter, like at the start of the day. And I was trying to find, cause you know, like, uh, Shams and I are out there retweeting goalie start announcements and I couldn't find this Koskinen start. All I found was Mark Spector tweeting being like, you, I think that Koskinen would probably play. To, you know, it was, it was like not based on anything, just speculation. But yeah, so I was recommending to my brother was actually asking me. Who, by the way, my brother Joel is in Tier Three uh, Bin- Binghamton Finals. Like, so if he wins his matchup, he's losing right now to uh, a friend of the show, Shane. But uh, if he wins, he'll be in Tier One next year, which would be pretty wild. But anyways, he was asking me if he should add Koskinen, and I was like. I would wait until he's confirmed before you add him. And he was like, well, on Yahoo, he has a green check mark. And I was like, just wait. And then he like, because my brother's actually like a busy person, not like me. He has like a life outside of fantasy hockey. <laughs> so then he messaged me after the game started being like, oh, I got busy with work and I didn't add him. And now he is playing. Like I felt like he was maybe even a little annoyed at me. So I was very happy to see that he got beaten up on. And it was good that he didn't add him because Minnesota won five to one, which means, first of all, as far as Edmonton goes, for what it's worth, got to because Mike Smith has been on a hot streak. I was even surprised they gave Koskinen in that game. Yeah, he had a good game previously against Colorado, but yeah, they're going to play Nashville on Thursday, and I think I'm willing to add Mike Smith early for that. Like, I guess he could be injured. I guess actually he's one of those goalies that's more likely to be injured randomly at the last minute than others, but I think it's very likely that uh, Mike Smith will play if you want to get him versus Nashville, and he is on a hot run. Would you? Would that be something that you would be interested in, or would you be afraid to grab Mike Smith for that game? I mean, I don't know about afraid. I don't, you know, Nashville had some times where they were putting up like five and six goals. That seems to have worn off a little bit. They haven't been quite as lethal on the power play as they had been previously. So I think I would be relatively comfortable with that start. I think that, you know, uh, I think that they'll be able to control the zone a little bit. But, um, you know, uh, obviously those, those Preds have been pretty effective lately. Saros got a shutout in his last game. Like all the stuff that was missing when I was still alive with my many Preds has really, uh, has really taken off in this four game week where they've had him. So it's been really good. Yeah, I definitely, I agree. Like Mikhail Granlin has like been super boring. He's like, maybe though that might be the kind of thing where that's led to him being dropped even in your like super deep leagues. And he, obviously now with a Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, we're just really jumping around because I meant to talk about Minnesota actually, <laughs> but uh, with Nashville, yeah, maybe Granlin now is dropped, but definitely Ryan Johansson continues to be the stud. Like he scored the overtime winner in their last game. But okay, speaking of, I want to talk about Minnesota who beat up on Edmonton, specifically Matt Boldy, who was so cold, dropped in a lot of leagues. Now is people's chance to go get Matt Boldy back. He got an assist in that game, but most importantly, he's back on the top power play. I don't know why Minnesota, 
even messed with it. It was going so well. Then randomly they were like, we're going to do two defensemen. I guess like Matt Dumble got injured. Maybe that's what triggered them to change it. But I mean, come on. It, it works so well. Zook, Kaprizov, Boldy, Erickson Eck. That was crazy how I said Zook before Kaprizov. I should have said Kaprizov first. But uh, yeah, Spurgeon. Those are the five players you want. And then obviously also Kevin Fiala, who scored a couple goals. And I think that's your group of Minnesota players that are interesting at the moment. And they all did well. Well, actually, Erickson Eck maybe is still questionable. He sometimes he didn't have any goals. I would say he's kind of a fringe. Yeah. Ryan Hartman had two goals also. He's the one on the top line with, with Zook and Kaprizov. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a guy to look at as well. Um, I think got into some a bit of a, a bit of rough stuff with uh, Evander Kane as well. I think he uh, flipped in the bird during that game. Yeah, don't you think it's kind of weird? Not Brian approved. I mean, what I thought was sorry. You go, you go. I mean, we could both do a rants here. I just think it's funny that the NHL is like this, like kind of like a violent game. Like you're allowed to check people. They even allow fights. They let people drop the gloves and then with their bare hands try to punch each other in the face. And no one gets a penalty. Like we well, get a penalty, but you don't get suspended. You don't get fined. But you show your finger, and that's a fine. Like who comes up with just like what's allowable in the NHL? <laughs> Yeah, we're very much on the same wavelength. I was watching the replay and I thought the funniest thing about it is like the referee sees it and he like looks shocked and like grabs his hand and tries to like, you know, get him, don't, you know, don't do that. You can't, you can't make that outward expression. Like they were just punching each other, man. It's like, it's not a big deal. I don't think. I mean, I don't know. Are the children going to be scandalized by seeing a finger after they just watched two dudes punch each other in the face? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand it either. I just, the reaction was just really funny to me. Also, like, sometimes when they're mic'd up, like, they're swearing. Isn't swearing worse than showing a finger? Like, if I had a kid, you're the parent, Lewis. Like, what's the hierarchy of how mad you get at your kids? If they drop an F-bomb or if they show the middle finger? Which one's worse? Uh, I mean, it's exclusively guilt on my end because I know that they got it from me and not from their mother. So, (laughs) uh, (laughs) I don't know. I, I, I would be more upset with the word, I think, because people are more likely to hear it. If they see it, the kid can just be like, oh, I don't know. I saw somebody do it. I don't know what it means. Like, you know, I just think that, uh, yeah, it's just silly. It was really silly. And yeah, Brian agrees. The ref reaction was just like so absurd that like the big thing that has to be done right now is we got to get that finger out of sight. (laughs) <laughs> yeah Ridiculous. make him wear make him wear like a glove that does that you can't move your fingers like you know i don't know make give him some special equipment as a punishment where you can't like show that he finger. just has to sit in the box with a sign on him that says i made an obscene gesture <laughs> there's worse gestures out there uh anyhow okay <laughs> oh, yeah. i should probably move on from that i guess like freddie gaudreau is the other guy he scored a, a goal in that game and he's on the line with so yeah there's like a lot of good minnesota players. they're kind of like nashville right like they're they're scoring a lot of goals and there's a lot of people that you could get excited about nashville actually tanner you know i'm still waiting for him he got like eight nine blocks or something in the last game so it's giving me like some nice floor of fantasy points but i'm still waiting for him to get that one goal on one shot like he tends to do every second game yeah, we're still jumping around a little bit, so I'm going to jump, you know, be in there too. I think uh, we had another like double digit shot game from Yossi too. I don't, I, I think that was who it was. I saw somebody had like 10 shots. Roman Yossi is happy. He's just, yeah. Do you think he's going to win the Norris? He's going again? bonkers. He should. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be too expensive uh, at drafts next year, though. I just, I mean, he's not going to pace, I don't think, for 104 points next year, as good as it's been. I guess I, I talked about this on the last short shifts with Ben, but the big thing would be to see kind of uh, if Forsberg stays in Nashville, because obviously that would be huge for them. It seems like they finally, after years and years and years, have figured out that power play. Uh, so maybe I feel a little more confident about Yossi being like a point per game guy if Forsberg stays. But yeah, I just I just can't see how he's not going to be too expensive for what he's going to produce next year. That's that's my prediction. It's a sad one because I love Yossi and I was really glad to have him this year. I told Dave that was like the one guy that I really, really had to have. I had one forward goalie in D that I really wanted him to draft. Like, kind, Not totally no matter what the price, but as long as it didn't get crazy. Uh, and obviously that was something that saved my season. It's keeping me in Tier 1 even though I uh, can't get past that first round of the playoffs. Yeah, the Toronto Maple Leafs of Tier 1. But hey, you're a contender right. every year. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I totally yeah. agree with that take. Like, in general, <laughs> in fantasy, defensemen are, like, less likely to keep up, like, these amazing seasons every year. Like, even Roman Yossi a couple seasons ago was amazing, and last year took a step back. So I think, like, why spend the top, like, defenseman draft pick on Roman Yossi when you can, like, get just, like, 
a next tier guy who maybe could like end up having a season, you know, like he's having right now, or at least someone close to it. And you could wait a couple of rounds or spend a little less in your auction draft. Yeah. I think people looked at Makar as being far away that number one option. And so anybody after Makar, you know, uh, was, was going to be coming at a bit of a discount. Um, you know, I thought Fox was maybe, uh, had shown pretty much what he could do. So I don't think there was any sort of surprises there. So that was a guy that I thought maybe, uh, wasn't as likely to get. But yeah, after, after that McCarr tier, I think you had a tier of, of affordable defensemen who could put up that kind of, uh, that kind of nice season. I think I ended up, you know, obviously with his, his performance lately, I think I ended up with a pretty decent deal on, um, McAvoy. I think, I think Yossi went for 34 and McAvoy went for 20. Uh, and I think those turned out to be pretty, pretty good deals. Yeah, another guy, by the way, having an amazing season that's maybe getting a little overshadowed, or maybe not, but uh, Victor Hedman, like, definitely rounds up oh, that yeah. triumvirate. Like, he's at 68 points in 73 games, so maybe, like, boring, not over a point per game, like Makar and Yosi. why would I be interested? <laughs> but yeah, pretty amazing season for Hedman. Then Fox and Carlson round out the top five in terms of total points, though Aaron Ekblad was actually right there, 57 points in 61 games before he got injured, so maybe he's, like, the Roman Yosi for next year. Like, you know, he's not going to go in the top tier because, he, you know, maybe he's not a big a, of a name. And also he got injured. And so, like, you look at the totals and they're not as exciting. But I don't see a reason why, my, like, Ekblad can't put up Yosi numbers next year. Like, the way Florida's offense is so insane. Yeah, I guess the one thing that I would just be a little more cautious about him is that he might not score as frequently because I think he has some better shooting options. I mean, Duchesne and Forsberg, you know, have been good at, you know, decent shooters. But the rest of that top power play are mostly distributors and it seems like they're really leaning on Yossi to be a guy who produces a lot of shots either to hit the net and you know possibly go in or to be deflected um so he seems a little bit more like the center of the offense as opposed to on Florida where there's so much talent you know I I don't think that that Ekblad has kind of the same spotlight maybe that Yossi does yeah who would have taken the bet that Yossi would have more shots this season than Brady Kachuk Right now, Yosi has yeah. one more. It looks like so. We'll see who. Wins well, that. you know, Brady. Brady sat out a few games. So no, okay, seventy-one. Okay, so two hundred fifty-three shots for Yosi in seventy-one games, and two hundred fifty-one shots for Kachuk in seventy games. So just one fewer game. Oh, all right. And two fewer shots. So I guess he probably would have taken more than two shots. So fine. So maybe like Brady's pacing for a little more, but it's close. Awfully damn close, though. Yeah. Let's let's give credit where it's due. That's a that's a you know if you count those peripherals, that's really outstanding production from a defenseman so the avalanche have started their game today against the kings they're already up two nothing i've got ranton in so i'm taking a look at the score of being like all right let's see what i got here and zilch from ranton in yet mark's stream of eric johnson hit he got an assist from eric johnson and bowen by we had someone on twitter asking which abs defenseman should he add like not including Taves or Makar, so basically everyone else was available. Gerard, Byram, yeah, and, Johnson. And I like uh, responded being like, I'm not that interested in any of them, and now Bowen Byram has two assists today, so that person's probably gonna, like, unsubscribe <laughs> and unfollow, so really apologize. I hope you I mean, you know, Byram anyway. We're all guessing, right? And I, I agree with you. I think, uh, I think Byram is, you know, a guy who, um, yeah, I would have some trepidation with. Obviously, he's coming back from a, an injury. He did have that conditioning stint, so he's probably ready to hit the ice running. Like, clearly, he's playing well. But, yeah, it's just a really interesting case. I wonder what's going to happen with Byram over the next few years. Uh, you know, it's just um, uh, he's he's got a lot of roadblocks in his way, but he obviously is a, is a really talented guy. How, how much of a jackpot did Colorado hit getting Devon Taves for basically nothing given, given his production? Yeah, speaking of jackpots for Colorado, they just signed this guy Ben Myers out of the NCAA. He was apparently, like, the top prospect coming out of there. Like, Peter Harling dropped a list of the top NCAA prospects, and they were that Myers is, like, number one with a bullet. Uh, so they just keep on getting these gems for nothing to go along with all the players that they're paying for. But, yeah, great drafting, and Colorado, obviously, that'll be pretty good, right? They're going to win the Cup. I think, or, I mean, obviously we don't know, but they're the favorites to win the cup at the moment. And uh, they still have good young players coming up, like Byram and Ben Myers, potentially, that haven't even, like, hit their stride yet. Oh, and of course, Alex Newhook is also someone who's supposed to be really good one day. So this team is, you know, they could maybe lose Nazem Kadri to free agency, though I saw quotes saying that they're going to try to keep him. But, like, even if they lose him, it seems like they have a lot of replacements potentially coming up to help. 
Yeah, I would like them to keep Kadri just because I I spent to get him at the deadline in our keeper league, uh, and uh, his injury obviously meant that he did not do very much for me at all in terms of the uh, in terms of you know uh, moving forward. So I almost feel obligated to keep him at this point because of the points that are because of the picks that I spent on him. I have a strategy question for you since we were talking about Colorado. You mentioned you know oh got a couple goals. I want to see what R- Ranton got for me. Do you think that on a deeper team like Colorado that can score from its second and third lines pretty pretty effectively? Um, does that ever give you pause and make you think that you kind of want a, a more heavily loaded team where they're going to just rely on one line to score kind of like they have in, uh, you know, Nashville, for instance, since we've, since we've been talking about those guys? It's an interesting question. I mean, like Ranson is still having an amazing season, so obviously it hasn't affected him too much. But yeah, I guess it could go both ways because also the other team can't put their best defense, you know, against just like one line. And, you know, like we're seeing now maybe in New Jersey, like Jesper Bratt, maybe. I mean, I don't know, this is just speculation, right? But like, you know, he's all of a sudden sort of disappeared. Maybe it's just because he's not playing with Jack Hughes. But, you know, there's some teams that maybe like it's not great when you only have one line. But obviously some lines are just so good that they could overcome like that Boston line for years has been so good. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not sure. I never really thought of it. <laughs> It's been something that I've been trying to think about this season just because I had, um, you know, uh, uh, Nathan McKinnon. And so I'm always looking to see those, those top, uh, that top line getting goals. And I just would see, you know, third line goals, fourth line goals. And I'm like, oh, this is lame. Like, mm-hmm. be like Nashville and just have all the scoring be from the top guys. I mean, to be fair, I've also had Barkov in the couple and Florida is super stacked and he's also still doing fine. So I don't know if it's something yeah. that. I don't know how much they're definitely doing fine, right? You just I get maybe maybe it's just a psychological thing where I see that that goal alert go off and I'm like, oh, these nobodies, that's oh. lame. Just you know, I only want to see superstar score, please. No schmoles. What you're I'm not into it. You're basically saying like since the team scores more goals, then a less percentage of their goals are from their star players and other teams who you have star players on. Because I guess that is what are- I'm saying. That's a good point. Right. It's just more goals overall, maybe. So I shouldn't be I shouldn't be so so miffed about it. It just uh isn't in the percentage, you know. The percentages aren't falling where I want them. Right. It's just more disappointment in your life because you're getting more notifications of goals that you've expected to get in on. I, I just want to have that little gambler's rush for a moment, please, when I see that goal <laughs> thing go up. That's all That's all I crave. That's all I'm living for. Okay. Quick lightning round here because I know you got to go. Okay. Mark Shifley is injured for Winnipeg. They play still Friday, Saturday this week. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any like fantasy impact really to read into. Like Kyle Connor, PLD, and Svechnikov was one line in the last game. Then Stasny with Ehlers and a fellow named Morgan Barron. So I guess there's your fantasy impact because Morgan Barron had a goal and an assist in that game against Montreal. And I guess if he's playing on what's got to be line two, right? Ehlers and Stasny, and maybe even called line one. Ehlers is so amazing. So uh, maybe he's someone that you want to look at in your super deep leagues. I've never heard of him. So I, I don't have much to say about him at the moment. That's usually Brian's job. Yeah, I think I think he's the brother of the recently injured Justin Barron. Um, but yeah, for me, the guy I like there is, is Sveshnikov and Ben's not here to, to rain on my parade. So I'm going to I'm going to say if I'm picking right. one of those top six from Winnipeg, give me Sveshnikov. Who also okay. had a goal. Yeah, yeah. So uh, also, there's a guy in uh, New Jersey that I wanted to bring up. So this this is the part of the show where I bring up players that we had never heard of before. Uh, Zetterland. Do you know this person, Zetterland, on New Jersey? So he's been playing on a line with Sharon Govich and Heshear. So Jesper Bratt was even off that line, playing on a line with Tatar and Mercer. So another reason to maybe be concerned about Jesper Bratt, not to, you know, pile on him. But, uh, you know, Sharon Govich, Heshear, and Zetterland had a good game for New Jersey in their last outing versus uh, Arizona. Obviously, it helps when you're playing Arizona. They won 6-2. to two. And yeah, the Zetterland guy had a goal and an assist. He also had two assists in the game against Dallas. I think he's, we're looking at a top line guy, second power play, producing. If you're in a deep league, I guess the problem is New Jersey like plays on only busy days. Maybe this is more of like yep. um, next week or who knows like what people's situations are. But definitely someone to have on your radar. Maybe someone to consider for next year. Yeah, uh, you know, I think and if he's going to be out there with his share, obviously that is to his advantage. I would say that his goal was like. 95% he sheer and 5% him burying it in the back of the net. Um, you know, it was just a really nice play by he sheer to, to bring the puck down without high sticking it somehow, even though it kind of looked like a high stick to me. Uh, and he just had a really nice feed, uh, you know, right down the Royal Road for, for Zetterland to score on. But yeah, I mean, you know, four points in, in two games, you said, I think that's, that's pretty exciting production. We're all short term right now. It's that time of the season. So 
uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe worth a look. Although, as you said, the schedule is not doing anybody any favors. Yeah, okay, and I'll end with one last cold streak, and then we'll be out the door here on the first ever experimental... Do we even have a name for this? Are we just going to call it Short Shifts? Just, uh, it's Wednesday Night Fun Times. I mean, I'm going to have to post this in the feed. Is that what I'm going to call it? Wednesday Night Fun Times? <laughs> okay, uh, well, I would make it a Short Shifts and maybe okay, call, call it, it... I don't know, give it a silly name. Sure, okay. But yeah, so, this is a, I mean, this is a short, a short-ish shift. Yeah, shorter than my normal shows. Uh, anyways, I wanted to go to San Jose. Eric Carlson's letting me down. He's the namesake of our show, but, you know, we got to be hard on him when he's not doing well. And I don't know what's going on with the guy. He's playing huge minutes. He played 25 minutes, like, in the last game, the previous game, 26 minutes, the game before that. But I'm seeing only one assist in his last four, like, three assists in his last eight. Like, he's just not producing, not not shooting as much. Like, he was the guy that we were so excited at the start of the year that he was having this, like, renaissance breakout season. Now it seems to be uh, falling apart. San Jose plays Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's like hard for me to drop him. I was thinking today when I was thinking of adding Duclair, I was looking at maybe dropping Josh Morrissey, who's been so good, but Winnipeg only plays Friday, Saturday. I was thinking, should I drop Morrissey maybe? Or maybe should I just drop Carlson? Because even though he plays one more game, he's not doing anything with it. So I don't know. Do you think it's just bad luck? Or do you think like Carlson's maybe just losing a step? Or is San Jose just terrible? I mean... (laughs) I think, I think it's a combination there, right? Like even, even your, your, you know, solid defensemen who might be pacing for 50 or 60 points, they're going to have a lot of games where they're not going to score, right? I think you preach this level of patience. They can't all be Roman Yossi, you know, getting a goal and two assists every game, right? So sometimes you're going to just end up with those empty spots. I don't know. I, I mean, I haven't been paying a ton of attention to him because he's been owned in all these leagues. Is he shooting still? That's the big thing, right? We love the shots. Yeah, not really. No, not doing anything. Yeah. We're, uh, we're looking at like one or less than one fantasy point per game lately in a lot of his games. And it's not tough because like there's not a lot to play for for San Jose, you know, other than maybe seeing what they've got out of uh, Kokkinen. Ka- Kokkinen versus uh, Reimer. So, yeah, I mean, it just it doesn't seem like they have a ton to prove or to kind of go out and do, you know, with Doug Wilson stepping down, maybe we're looking at like a real honest to God rebuild in San Jose instead of saying, uh, you know, the window is has been closing for like a 15 years now. So finally we'll get the rebuild. It's kind of odd know. when you're doing a rebuild that you sign an eight year contract with Tomas Hurdle, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Well, maybe they're, I don't know. Is that a sign and trade kind of situation? Probably not. I guess with the price that they paid for him. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how things uh, how things play out there. But yeah, definitely not high on uh, Carlson. And I think if you can get a similar number of games out of, I mean, if you can get two forward games, I would take that in a heartbeat over three defenseman games, especially from Carlson. I blew it. We'll, we'll see how uh, we'll see how Declare does and see how bad I feel about missing that stream. But okay, thanks everyone for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks also to the people who watched live. This has been a lot of fun, and obviously thank you, Lewis, because I just threw this on you today. I was like, kind of want to do this thing. Who's in? You put up your hand, and here we are. We just knocked out a banger of a show. So good job, us. Yeah, it was fun. You know, didn't have to do a lot of prep. Just kind of jumped in and got to say some ideas you know i i enjoyed kind of having our send-off episode of short shifts but still feel that itch a little bit to kind of jump on and talk about it it's always fun to chat with you so uh, lots of fun thank you for having me you're like a wrestler right they have their like retirement matches but then they always still like have more matches after like mick foley how many matches did he have after he had his retirement match against triple h like i feel like he had like a whole career after that I do love Mick Foley. And then <laughs> uh, Stone Cold was back recently. Anyway, we're, we're Stone getting Cold distracted Stone Cold is in now. WWE again? I've stopped watching at this point. Oh, he I don't he had some big comeback. There I you know, this is this is going to sound like, you know, I was only half paying attention. I saw it on coming up on Twitter because hockey and wrestling Twitter seemed to overlap quite a bit. But yeah, he like came back and obviously won some match against I don't know who, Vince McMahon probably. <laughs> Isn't Vince McMahon like 80 years old now? <laughs> Yeah, okay, hard. but like, you know, still, still didn't good. Stone Cold get like horribly, horribly injured too? Like, I think it's just good for him to be out there trying some moves. Good on him. Way to get back in the ring. I'm sure that was an extremely entertaining match of the horribly injured Stone Cold versus the, <laughs> versus the extremely <laughs> old man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, see you everyone. Sure people Bye. loved it. <laughs> Bye, Lewis. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.